Welcome everyone. It's Monday morning. Gee, it's really very cold, freezing. I hope all of you are warm and, you know, have planned your week for a very cold week, I think, ahead. Uh, so um, welcome to everyone who's listening to the grad chat. And today, again, it's a very special series. We have many grad group leaders joining us today. And Subha, uh, from the, who, who manages the grad groups, she's the service coordinator for the grad group program. Um, so before I commence uh, the program, I'd like to acknowledge that we are virtually meeting and working on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, at least I am. And um, we'd like to um, we pay our respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging leaders, and recognize the strength, resilience, and capacity of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait people in this land. So a warm welcome to you all. And before we commence the program today, I thought it's really, really important for us to talk about um, Mental Health Week. And um, this is a special week that we will be focusing on talking about mental health. And I don't say that in a way because often I think uh, people find it very hard to talk about mental health issues because I think there is, you know, taboo and stigma attached to it. And it's always um, the courage to um, feel comfortable to raise it as a health issue. And we've progressed very well in our society to acknowledge that as a factor that may impact on our lifestyle, our learning, our family life. And for us at GSA, it's extremely important to talk about it and acknowledge that one of our strategic objectives is to support our graduates um, with programs, activities, or any kind of support that will you know, enhance your emotional health and well-being to ensure that you're being rep represented properly when there are changes in the university's policy there are activities that uh, we run uh, to support academic support to recognize that um, people may need that additional support at peri different periods of your time when you're studying in the organization in at the university. We also understand that transitioning out from a graduate program into the workforce or currently under this challenging period of COVID-19 many of us have kind of experienced different kinds of um, stresses. And um, I think it would be very difficult to pinpoint to someone and say, you know, just be resilient, you're gonna be okay, because, you know, it, it, it's challenging for all of us. And so um, the week that we're gonna to spend today is really about discussing these issues, talking about it in a manner that we all feel comfortable to share our experiences, our stories, be able to refer people on to um, proper services, ensuring that graduates are you know, act, um, actively participating in, the, um, in seeking services from either, you can always ring the GSA's 1-800 number, we'll be able to support you in find a service within the university or with outside the university. And Tevita will talk a little bit at the end of the program. But I thought that um, it's very, very important for us as an organization to understand that, um, you know, we as an organization consider, uh, you know, it's our absolute responsibility to ensure that students are being supported and uh, services are being provided. And later on in the middle of the show, I'll talk to you a little bit about what's going on also at the university so that, you know, that can help you um, navigate your way if you're looking for some services. So keeping that in mind, grad groups form an absolute beautiful platform for GSA to ensure that different parts of the organization are working along with Subha and Claire who work with the program to ensure 
we're facilitating and supporting grad groups, the existing grad groups, but we're also providing avenues for new um, graduates in the university to find like-minded people or interests who have hobbies, campaigns, advocacy to um, form a grad groups. And uh, today we're really going to talk a lot more about um, the special grants. And if you wanted to know a little more about how to form a grad group, please listen to our grad chat that we hosted last Monday. So a warm welcome to Suva. And um, I'm really pleased today we have uh, many members on our panel. We have Tavita, who is our general manager for student engagement and strategic partnership. Um, apart from that, we have Alexandra, Emily, Lee, Marcus, Rachel joining us today. So Subha, welcome to you. Good morning. And um, how was your weekend? <laughs> good morning, Rashna. Uh, my weekend was good. If the weather was a little bit bad, even still, maybe it's nice to have bad weather if you're staying indoors. But yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to start by just introducing the grad, uh, what a grad group is. So grad groups are student-led, student-run groups that have affiliated themselves to the Graduate Student Association for funding, support, training, and um, the help of the administration of their group. A grad group is a GSA affiliated student society that supports and is led by graduate students at the University of Melbourne. GSA's grad groups promote promote interaction, welfare, and cohesion within the University of Melbourne's diverse graduate student population. Oh, fantastic. That, that is really good. And um, I, I mean, thank you for giving us lots of information last week about how to form a group and what affiliation means and what kind of support is available. But this week, I mean, I think I am and the participants are all interested in knowing lots more about the grants that you offer. So uh, can you just define to us what is a grant and also what are the different kinds of grants that are available to grad groups? Yeah, definitely. So uh, most of our grants, we offer one sort of umbrella grant called the special grant, um, and they encompass all the sorts of special activities that a grad group can undertake. Special grant funding is for projects, events, equipment or activities that are unusual, one off, extraordinary or based on the special needs of the grad group. This is available to all grad groups. Generally, they are processed on through grant rounds, but given the current situation, we sort of we sort of foregone uh, grant rounds, and they're kind of on a rolling basis based on the merit of the application and the need of the of, of each group. Um, special grants are available for a maximum of two thousand dollars for each grant, and are processed in um, in rounds of say two two weeks. Okay, so every um, every two weeks you release two grants. Is that what it means? Uh, no. So we release, uh, depending on how many people apply um, within every two weeks, we release as many as we can approve. So there isn't necessarily a cap. However, what we do is we just process them in lots of two weeks. Okay, fantastic. So just to give people an information is that um, the Graduate Student Association receives funding from the University of Melbourne through the SAF funding or the Student Support Assisted Programs funding. And what we do is we dedicate about 250,000, up to $250,000 every year for the grad groups program. So I think that's where the funding is. And these funds are audited every year they via an independent auditor and all information about the grants are definitely available through the organization or if you contact Suba. So just as a matter of transparency, it's important to understand that there are guidelines for SAF and GSA as a very, uh, as an organization, um, we do believe strongly on transparency and financial accountability and the information is available on our in, through our annual report, which is which gets audited every year. So, Suba, I'd really like to welcome um, Lee on the group, and um, thank you, Lee, for joining us. And 
would you like to introduce uh, Lise from the Animal Welfare Science students of the University of Melbourne. So over to you, Suba, to introduce yeah. Lee. Yeah, fantastic. So Lee is the Secretary of the Animal Welfare Science Students of the University of Melbourne. Uh, they're a postgraduate student association from the Animal Welfare S Sciences Centre, researching ways to optimise welfare for animals in companion production and zoo settings. Thanks, Lee. Good morning, ladies. It's good to be here. So, Lee, could you tell us a little bit about the purpose of your um, group as well as what kind of activities you run? Yeah, sure. So, we were formed only a couple of years ago in 2018, um, basically as an excuse for a, a formalised social group. Um, we are a small centre. We don't have a lot of students. Um, we have, I think at the moment, 22 active members, but I think we only started with eight or nine. Um, and it's a really tight knit group. Um, and now, you know, it's to try to encourage um, some honours and master's students to get involved as well so that we can get to know them. Um, one of the strengths of our group is the support that we provide each other. And we want to make sure that that support goes out to other students that aren't necessarily in the office as much as some of us are, um, so that they can still, you know, reap those benefits of having such a tight knit group. Fantastic. And I understand you offer academic and professional life of the animal welfare graduate students. You support enhance that. You promote interaction and welfare cohesion between the animal welfare graduates group. Um, can you tell us a little bit of what kind of activities that your uh, association runs? Yeah, sure. So regular activities that we try to keep regular um, are journal clubs, shut up and write sessions, um, when we were in the office, we'd try to do Friday afternoon drinks periodically. Um, at the moment, through all of this, we're doing virtual workspaces twice a day. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just a standard um, time frame that people can log in just to have a chat or just to sit there and see the faces of our, of our co-students as well. Fantastic. And can you talk us a little bit about Shut Up and Write? Because I think that's probably you know, quite an important thing for people to kind of, is that still, did you manage that virtually or is it still going or what's happening during the current COVID-19 period? Yeah, sure. So obviously, previously it was um, everybody would get into a room and sort of lock down and just try to smash out some writing. Um, at the moment, I think we're using the virtual workspace um, as a similar shut up and write platform. Um, I guess it just depends on the needs of the students that log in each day, whether or not they need some contact and some chat or whether they just want to feel like they're working, you know, with their group. Um, so that that is part of the virtual workspace some days. Fantastic. So it, I don't really need to be only an animal welfare science student or can, uh, is that the kind of criteria that you put for your group that primarily it's about for people who are within that uh, faculty or that interest of study? Yeah, so our, um, our proper members have to be a student through the Animal Welfare Science Centre. Mm -hmm. That can either be um, a master's or PhD students. Um, we also have honorary members. So we do include honour students. Um, we also have an international intern that comes over every year, that's a different person. So we include them as honorary members. And we also have um, our RAs that we try to keep on as honorary members because they're usually very involved in things that we're doing. Thank you so much, Lee. And if, I'm a, if I want to get some information about your club, where, would, where do you think the first point is for me to kind of explore and get more information? Sure, so we're on all, well, we're on three of the major socials, so Facebook, Instagram, Instagram and Twitter. Um, Facebook's probably the one that would have the most information. Um, Instagram and Twitter, yeah, are just retweets and um, photos. So perhaps head to Facebook, just type in animal welfare science students of the University of Melbourne um, yep. and you can find us there. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lee. And actually it's really, really important coming back to, um, you know, the mental health week is reaching out to people, getting that academic support, trying to f form a virtual community. All that's really, really important 
And I think a sense of belonging in this isolation is really, really important. And coming back to, um, you know, the university health, mental health day is tomorrow. That's the 5th of May, May. And the theme is use your voice. And I think from a perspective in the grad groups for GSA, nurturing these groups is they actually form an amazing platform for people to have, you know, diff the insights and stories being shared and being able to um, talk. The, you know, it's about actually sharing your concerns, sharing your interest and having a virtual community or real community when we actually open up. But I think it's really important that we've all experienced is what self-isolation or the isolation has done to us. It impacts our mental health and well-being. So I do encourage you all to get onto the grad group's website and you know, learn a little more about how to be a member of the grad group or form a grad group. So Suba, coming back to you, if um, can you just lead me through a process of applying for a grant and what are the kind of grants that are available? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the grant process, uh, like I've mentioned, is now a process of about two weeks. So initially, we would suggest getting together within your committee and workshopping an idea for a project. Um, I definitely suggest, again, to look at the how-to guide for tips and initiatives um, and projects that you could potentially take on. We've got some examples, especially in regards to the COVID-19 situation where um, kind of in-person group activities Activities are no longer say possible for the time being we've got some other initiatives say around things like starting a project like a podcast a publication a magazine that you could potentially do but yeah having that conversation to figure out not only a project that everyone is interested in but is in line with your group um, and then from there uh, jumping on the website where we've got our special grant application now the special grant application is a formal proposal process um, now now, it, while it does seem like a little bit of a blank canvas, what we ask is for just a series of questions to um, to figure out what it is that you're trying to achieve. Um, our motive is we really want to give you these grants, so you never have to really infer too much information. And up the top, we have some of the considerations we think of when we are assessing grants. So I'll explain some of them to you now. So um, when reviewing special grant applications, we consider the following. Is the process in line with or SAF activity? Is the proposal in line with the purpose of the grad group? Does the proposal improve the grad group members' skills or provide them with valuable experience? Or does it increase the grad group's reach to other students or the general public? Does it help raise the voice of students? Does it have a positive impact on the group? Does it assist in expanding the group's resource or respond to a special need or a hardship within the group? So these are the sorts of considerations we make within your proposal. Now, like I said, you don't have to infer too much. What we're asking is kind of just simple questions to figure out what it is you're trying to achieve. Now, again, with the proposal process, if you do come into any questions, please feel free to get in touch with myself or with Claire and we can help you through that process. So once you have submitted a proposal, now it's worth mentioning you can submit a proposal in the form of a written document you can just answer the the sort of series of questions or you could even make a video or provide us a link to say a timeline for say an event anything like that we try to be as sort of broad and flexible as we can as far as your proposal however what we do need is some kind of rough budget I, we understand that when we're thinking about these sort of like projects that are in the pipeline it's hard to have rough uh, concrete numbers. So very happy to have like a very rough budget of how you would like to spend the maximum of $2,000 that are available to you. Now, I would also suggest thinking about is um, collaboration within the groups. We really look favorably on and we want to support um, cross group collaboration. So if there is another grad group that you're interested in or have some like share some values with, we really recommend um, getting together, collaborating on a project and each of you could potentially apply for a special grant up to say three groups so there's kind of a larger pool of money to put towards a larger activity 
Um, so yeah, after you've submitted your proposal, uh, we try to have them back to people within a maximum of a two week turnover now. Um, but yes, we'll keep you in touch. We'll keep in touch with you and get and go back and forth about how not only um, you you would like to be approved for the grant, but how we can best go about supporting you in other means as well, not just the financial element. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic, Suba. What I'm understanding is, you know, think of the idea, think of your group, you know, go through those questions. It's not, um, you know, we don't expect pages and pages of submission. Pick up the phone, have conversations with Suba and Claire who can assist you with the process. What I've loved is get onto the website and there's a section on frequently answered uh, the questions. You know, those are really good because they're simple, they're straightforward, and the budget is important because we don't want details, I think, but we do want to know how you're spending the money and cannot emphasize more on collaboration because I think by collaborating, the reach is more, there's more minds to think about how to kind of run these activities effectively. And our aim is really not to reject applications. Our aim is to get this grant out as effectively and efficiently out into the graduate community. So taking that from there, I would love to hear from Rachel, from the student conservators at Melbourne, as well as from Alexandra, who has um, joined us from the Paraguayan Student Society. So over to you. Uh, Subha, if you can introduce each of those groups and if you all can tell us a little bit about your group. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start with Rachel, who is the Vice President of the Student Conservators at Melbourne. The Student Conservators seek to raise the profile of conservation in the university and wider community. They act as a point of contact between students and staff involved in conservation and provide networking, professional development and social opportunities for students in conservation. Thank you, Rachel. Hey, thank you. Um, yeah, so the Student Conservators at Melbourne, or we commonly refer to ourselves as SCAM. Um, yeah, so we're a student group. We were established, I believe, in about 2008. Um, and we're a group for, uh, mostly for the Masters of Cultural Materials students uh, at Melbourne. Um, but we also welcome um, the Masters of Arts Curatorship and Arts and Cultural Management students um, into our class, as well as uh, the PhD uh, students as well. Um, yeah, so uh, Suba summed us up uh, really well. So we try to um, uh, organise group, uh, organise activities which uh, kind of support uh, what we're learning uh, as part of the master's program. Um, so events like uh, workshops and um, also uh, professional networking uh, opportunities um, to kind of help introduce students to the conservation profession and kind of uh, get their foot in the door, so to speak. How oh, fantastic. So your main objective is really to provide networking, professional development and social opportunities for students in conservation so in this COVID-19 period, that must be challenging. And do you ha have you run any activities in the last six weeks? Uh, not in the last six weeks, no. We've just kind of uh, gotten our heads around uh, the change in the course itself. Because um, yeah. uh, we're a very practical based course. So generally we're in labs and whatnot. Um, and obviously we can't really do all that stuff at the moment. Yeah. Um, and kind of a lot of our social activities as well is based on being together in person and all that. Um, but yeah, now we've we've recently had some meetings about what we're going to be doing in this uh, funny and strange time. Um, so we kind of uh, so we obviously have uh, seminars and stuff, but now we're moving to webinars and um, yeah. having. Uh, professionals, whether they be conservators or artisans or uh, other rare trade specialists um, coming to talk to us um, in little workshops um, that we'll do online. Um, and we're also looking at um, kind of more informal events. Um, so we're looking at having a, some sort of movie night and whatnot. So yeah, we're just trying to, trying to adapt, yeah. 
Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, I mean, I think we are all experiencing the same is um, what I find is um, even if you're not running an activity, which is, you know, straightly attached to the aim and purpose of the group, but just having those connections and being able to talk to one another and looking at, you know, having someone on the phone to talk to actually makes a lot of difference. So, Subha, over to you. And um, I understand, Rachel, the, uh, what is the best way for students to get over, get to uh, get onto your group? Yeah, sure. So uh, we have a website, studentconservators.com. Um, so most of our info is on there, but we're also on the main social media channels, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, so if you just search student conservators at Melbourne or SCAM, um, yeah, you should be able to find us. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Super. Thanks. Thanks, Rashna. So I'd like to now introduce the president of the Paraguayan Student Society, Aleandra. Now, the Paraguayan Student Association is about fostering cultural and academic development within the Paraguayan community and other student communities in the University of Melbourne. Thank you, Aleandra. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. Aleandra, would you be able to tell us a little bit about your group and um, can I say to you, we have heard so much about your group at work, so it would be lovely to share about um, your group to other members in the community so that, you know, they can jump onto your society and experience um, that wealth of camaraderie and the cultural and academic support that you offer to the Paraguayan community. Awesome. Um, so we are quite a new um, society. We established on the 27th of June, 2019. But there has been a lot of scholars from Paraguay coming, I think on the uh, year 2016, people started to come here through a scholarship of the, of the, gover the Paraguayan government. So we decided that it was about time to create a formal stu postgraduate student association. And since last year, we didn't stop working. We, our aim is to have at least one or two activities per month uh, because our benefits are to um, participate in cultural, sport, and academic events and then <clears throat> support a lot of, of our new members. We would like to share the Paraguayan culture because we, we know that we are a small country in South America, right in the middle landlocked. So it's very interesting to, to hear that we are from Paraguay, who we are, what we do, what language we speak. Um, so uh, as a part of that is to um, provide activities to improve Spanish for uh, like, um, other members um, through activities with our community and also to build networking with it our nationality and um, Australians and international students, right? Um, last year, we, we had many social activities, but one of the most important was the, our conference, which was the Paraguay Speak, and we did that just with three months of being active. Um, we brought people from Paraguay to participate, and we also invited um, academics from the University of Melbourne and, and PhD students who surprisingly uh, are doing their, their research in, in Paraguay, um, Paraguayan culture or Guarani or native people. So it was very interesting to find um, people interested in, in, in Paraguay. This year, um, we are continuing with at least having one activity per per month and so we are reinventing ourselves due to COVID-19. Um, our last activity, which was in person, was in March 6th um, and it was our welcoming session for, for welcome session for the, for the new scholars. We had at least 16 new Paraguayans and all the other members that were joining the, the, um, the community. And we also gave them like, um, fast track orientation because some of them arrive after the orientation of the of the university so we we offer our small orientation in spanish because we know that when you arrive to the country keeping up with the accent and with the pace or the intonation of people can be very overwhelming for for spanish speaker 
So that was our last activity in person. And since that, we started doing online things. Um, we want to boost the morale of our members. So we, we have our Instagram account active pretty much every day with campaigns. Uh, the campaign in April was um, st study tips, study tips for everybody could share could send us their picture with their student tips so they will be featured in the in our Instagram. Then we also gave our members um, care package. We call them anti-COVID um, package because we gave them face mask, vitamin C, some pills, some candies. So it was very cute. <laughs> that sounds really, really interesting. <laughs> yeah. And then for May, we have the Instagram campaign that it's Pulse of PSA. Yeah. Um, and that refers to our, our little pets that are waiting for us in our country. So it's, um, they are waiting for us, hashtag stay home. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and um, it, on the 14th and 15th of uh, May, we have our Independence Day. So we are having online conversations with um, with the association of not students, but Paraguayans who, who've been living here for quite like a lot of time. So in Sydney, so we are having a, a, a meeting with them. Um, and on the 15th, we are having a trivia night all about in Paraguay and the culture. And we have prizes, everything is good, e-gift, e uh, oh, See, I think you're really very well. I mean, I, I, I appreciate and, you know, value the, the work that you, your group has done. And um, I definitely encourage people to, from Paraguay to get on to the grad group because I think, um, you know, the activities that you're talking about is it's been very stressful generally for all the whole community and the graduates in in Australia and all over the world. But I think to be away from home, worrying about your family overseas, you know, being new to the country, and as Kalyandra said, you know, not actually having time to settle down in that, you know, being interacting with the community can be very stressful. And I think if you see the generosity and the love that you can get from these kind of grad groups, uh, a sense of safety, a sense of belonging is so, so important for your mental health and well-being. And I think, um, you know, we do need to understand, to be, be hopeful, be able to understand this time will pass too. And um, we are in it together. So uh, just at this moment, I don't want to kind of plug in and say to people that, you know, there are people who are doing it really rough with in respect to mental health that's there. Please, uh, there are good services that you can ring. There's the Lifeline, which is the 131114 number. It also has a Lifeline online chat. If you have a friend who is um, going through a difficult period or a family member, please access these good, um, the crisis support line. There's a suicide callback service, which is also a 1300-659-467 number. And um, please look around, keep an eye for people who are not coping, support them to access services or seek support from those services to help your loved and dear friends and your family. So thank you so much to Alejandra and Rachel. And Suba, if I wanted to talk to you, can you talk to us about a couple of special grants that you maybe sudden you, I mean, without giving out too much of details because we want the surprise element to be there. Uh, what are the new grants that you're going to be funding soon? Yeah, absolutely. So a few of the special grants that currently are responding to what is happening, um, I'd like to talk to you about is firstly, um, uh, PSA has talked about it as well, but some kind of like a care package for graduate groups. So groups are getting together or their committees are getting together and organising personal care packages chosen by the committee and then sent out to each group member, um, depending on how big your group, I guess this is one of those activities that works really well if you have a smaller group where you 
you know all of your members. So it's a care package compromising of a couple of items, say tea or journals, that sort of thing. And then a, a thoughtful sort of card going alongside it. We really appreciate how these, um, the handwritten nature of those sorts of things is a great way to uh, connect with group members and make them feel cared for and um, thought of despite the inability for them to meet and run events as usual. So yeah, something like a, a, a care package is a really great thing to do as um, and a great way to use special grant funds in order to um, really foster the welfare and support of members within your group. So there's one. And then another one, which is a little bit more niche that I wanted to share with you is um, a new group called on Enable Prosthetics, who are a group around who are interested in creating uh, prosthetics through 3D printing. Now, what they've done is a really great initiative where they have um, um, ordered DIY prosthetics assembly kits and then um, ship them out to all their members and run a workshop over Zoom creating these prosthetics. Um, really incredible stuff. So these are prosthetics that can be used by people, a real feat in the kind of skills and um, experiences of this of the group members. It really advances their group's aims of educating members on modelling and building of prosthetics. But I guess it's more of a, a really great model for the kind of thing you can achieve like I think a lot of people assume because some of their groups are relatively niche or a very specific matter um, there is a lot out there at the moment as far as DIY kits or craft kits that you could do um, if you would want to spend your special grant funds on getting all your members or a large portion of your members or the interested members in um, getting them a DIY kit and then jumping on say Zoom or, or Skype or whatever your preferred method is and then doing those things together is a really great way to again foster that sense of community and work on a project together even if you can't be together but yeah people are getting really creative with the sorts of things that they are applying for special grants um, with and again please have a look at the how-to guide for some examples of the sorts of things you can do but if you say um, are getting to a dead end and you're like well these are our interests but we're really stuck because we're not able to meet in person please get in touch with Claire and myself because we're looking at a lot of special grants and we'd love to talk to you and maybe give you some tips or let you know what another grad group is doing or maybe even put you in touch to see um, how they went or what um, what advice they might have for you or the kinds of things that um, other grad groups have done that you could potentially um, learn from. Oh, that's a, that sounds really um, that sounds really really good. That sounds great, Subha. Can I uh, also ask you if you could please introduce Marcus and Emily and talk a little bit about their groups and welcome on board, Marcus. And Marcus is from the Melbourne University Graduate Christian Union, and um, we'll have him talk a little bit about his group. And then we have the classics and archaeology postgraduate group. Emily will be following that. So over to you, Subha. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, as uh, Rashna has said, Marcus is the president of the Melbourne University Graduate Christian Union, which is a group dedicated to making friendships while sharing and following Jesus Christ. Anyone who is interested in finding out about Jesus is welcome to come along. They run weekly Bible studies, talks, mentoring groups, and events to help graduate students think about how Christianity relates to their field of study. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Suba. Thanks, Rashna. Yeah, so I think that's a pretty good summary of what we do. Um, we're trying to build a community that's uh, shaped by how the Bible and Jesus teaches us to be in community with each other and want to share that with other people. Thank you, Marcus. As Can well, I ask what kind uh, of main activities, activities that we are, are doing. Sorry, what kind of activities are you currently running, Marcus? Yeah, so our current activities, we've got some Bible studies that are happening each week. We've got a few different groups that are going. Um, and we're also doing um, some weekly social calls every Friday as well, um, and also running uh, some groups that are more open forum for people that um, are thinking about Christianity for the first time, um, or people new to Christianity. Thank you. And where would, uh, if somebody wants to get on, would they be uh, getting onto your website, the melbourne.cu.org.au, or what's the best way to 
get on to being a member of your group? Yeah, the best way is through Facebook, the Graduate Christian Union Facebook group. Um, on there, there's some information about the things that we're doing um, and also a sign up form to get in touch with us as well. Okay, thank you so much, Marcus. Over to you, to Suba. Yeah, thank you. So um, lastly, I'd like to introduce uh, the Vice President of the Classics and Archaeology Postgraduate Group, Rachel. So the Classics and Archaeology Postgraduate Group contrib contributes to the academic and professional development of postgraduates within the Classics and Archaeology Department by creating networks and facilitating conferences, symposia and other academic events at regular intervals throughout the year and having a representative role. Thanks. Welcome, Emily. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm part of the Classics and Archaeology postgrad, postgraduate group, and primarily we are a professional uh, development group and also a social group. Our members are predominantly uh, PhD students along with master's students who are enrolled within the Classics and Archaeology program at the University of Melbourne. We also have a very large alumni uh, membership as well, which is really great. We uh, very much kind of operate on the, I mean, on the focus of having these networking events, but making sure that all of our members participate quite a lot in these uh, events and make it quite sociable. So during, <laughs> During normal normal times, uh, we very regularly have uh, social events, just kind of casually getting together. But we also do lots of, uh, we have a lot of visiting scholars come. So quite often we would take them out for lunch or out for dinner, um, make sure that these scholars uh, have an opportunity to talk to our postgrads. It really widens everybody's networks. Uh, it also gives everybody a chance to talk about how their goals and where they would like to be in the future. Um, under COVID, we have been doing casual chats every Friday on Zoom, just making sure that everybody is okay. And those are casual, you know, people can join or not as they so choose. Um, but we've also been planning uh, as, a, as a replacement for um, the visiting scholars, since they are no longer visiting. Um, but we're still reaching out to people who are scheduled to come to do seminars. And we're organising online kind of fireside chats to try and recreate those, um, those events. We also kind of, in general, um, support our faculty, our school and our faculty in developing smaller symposia and conferences at the university or at other universities within Melbourne, which is really fabulous. And one of our primary projects during COVID is, is to just be sharing a lot of information with our members to make sure that they're aware of all um, article opportunities or call for papers for conferences that are planned in the future, um, making sure that we're still planning for things for the end of the year. Um, we also have a number of reading groups, which are really fun. Um, so we have an archaeology reading group, which involves students who are all doing archaeology, but they all have very different topics uh, so, and very different interests. So they are coming together and talking more about theoretical practices and how to apply that to their own research. We also have uh, academic language reading groups uh, classics and archaeology has a huge focus on academic reading of French and German. Uh, so we kind of try to develop groups around those. We also have, uh, I think our fun one is that since a number of our members usually are often out on field work during the year. So we have some merchandise that we have ripping our grad group and they wear that out in the field, which is always quite fun. And yeah, so that's kind of primarily what we do. Um, we are a social group, but it is a very small group. Um, and so we're definitely just trying to keep in contact with all of our members during this time.
Oh, that's fantastic, Emily. It's very, um, I know it's a small group, but it appears to be like adds value to the work that you do, but you also have that social element of taking care of one another during this difficult period of time. And um, Subha, can I just ask you, um, just to summarize in relation to the grants, let's say, is that, um, is there a limit or what is the upper, what's the maximum amount of grant that is allocated to a group? Yeah, so we actually don't have a limit. Generally, what we ask is that uh, students apply or groups apply for one grant per grant round. However, obviously, at this point, we are not running grant rounds and doing it on a uh, like a rolling cycle. So uh, you can apply for a maximum of $2,000 per grant and you can apply as many times as you like per year. However, when it gets beyond that four grants a year mark, we'd start to assess them a little bit more critically. I guess it's just more of a, a method of uh, evening out the distribution of the grants where everyone has access to put on these sorts of initiatives and projects. But yeah, um, apply as many times as you like. It's, uh, it's merit based. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And just to kind of emphasize from an organizational perspective is our aim is not to restrict people. Our aim is to ensure that our grants are made available to you. And as an incorporated association, I understand sometimes um, it sounds a bit bureaucratic, but uh, we do want um, people to kind of maintain uh, proper receipts, being able to you know, get proper reimbursements, being able to offer the documentation, because as much as um, we offer you the support, we have to be accountable to our funding body and our auditors. So sometimes those processes are in place just to help you um, you know, be able to be a bit more efficient and our staff are most willing, willing, willing to do that for you. So feel at any point to seek out help from Subha and Claire. So I have a few attendees. Are there any questions from them, please? You know, we have a few, but um, I understand there may be people who had special interest in their groups who came to here, but um, it's fantastic. If there are any questions, just Put it on chat and I can read those questions for you. But um, I, I also thought it's a good opportunity for me to um, talk to the members who are here, the grad groups, because you know this is an opportunity for the organization to also hear. Um, I am very confident uh, Suva and Claire do an amazing job and you know provide as much support. But any advice and support to um, GSA about um, you know, constructive feedback is always welcome. So I may just quickly go around and ask um, in no specific order, but Lee, did you have any advice or support to GSA about the way we run our activities or anything that you'd like to see change or for us to do better? Um, at this point, not really. Um, I think because we're still a new student group, we're still working out our relationship with GSA. Yeah. Um, so I think for now, um, that's been a really good relationship. So no questions, no feedback. Thank you. And I do encourage people, you know, to reach out to these leaders. Their information is all on our website. You know, otherwise, um, Google them. You'll find them on their Facebook. And please make an, you know, an attempt to talk to them about your interests and what they do so that, you know, you can actually improve um, the ability to kind of reach out to them and kind of find out if they are of the same interest or contact Suba and Claire for information. Um, I may ask Emily, Emily, um, if you had any suggestions or um, feedback for GSA. Uh, no, I think you guys do a great job. It's wonderful. Um, I think the only thing that we've struggled with in the past, but I know things have changed quite a bit, is with the, the way that the grants are done in terms of the reimbursements, et cetera, just the um, keeping up, considering the uh, committee changes, you know, yearly, and then the rules for applying for grants have also been changing a little bit, which I think is for the better, but it's just about, I guess, keeping that communication open for us. Thank you, that's a great feedback, and I hope um, we're trying to streamline it, streamline it as much as possible, but any kind of way of improving the processes. We're always open to it. Aleandra, is there anything would you like to give us some feedback on? 
No, um, I'm quite happy for the relationship between GSA and PSA. Um, we've always had a, a great response in terms of reimbursement, special grants, and support. So thank you very much. I'd also like to tell the draft groups is please contact Suba and Claire. Like we can provide you platforms like our Zoom webinars and other platforms that we access. And there can be our student engagement team can facilitate Zoom seminars or Zoom um, meetings for you. I know in the real world where I call it the real world, I call it the way when we don't have COVID-19 is that, you know, we were offering meeting spaces and other support. So that continues to be provided in this virtual environment. And we're very more than happy to support you in accessing any of the Zoom seminars, webinars that we can offer. Marcus, uh, any feedback for us at GSA? Um, no, no particular feedback. Everything's been pretty positive um, with our relationship with GSA application processes for special grants have all been smooth um, and super and clear available to talk to you when Thank you, it, even in the application processes mm -hmm. so that's great yeah i i definitely encourage you to pick up the phone and have a chat with them i found that very helpful always even for me sometimes when i don't understand something just get on to them they immediately respond with um, you know as quick as they can and also is please make an attempt to know about each other's grad groups activities because the opportunities of collaboration are immense uh, and it's not that you need to be only involved in one grad group you can be involved in many multiple grad groups and i encourage grad groups also to be involved in the life of our organization we currently have um, the constitutional change that we are undertaking the aim of these constitutional change is to ensure that we are a robust organization that is that are able to re represent you, continue with our activities, be proactively, be engaged with you, and be, you know, it has to be a student-led organization. And so any of your feedback, please contact any of our council members um, who are, all their details are advertised on the website or you know, my, contact me as the CEO, but Suba and Claire are good people to actually give any feedback immediately and ensure that, you know, our attention is drawn to any of the issues that you're ra raising. So um, I may, um, I think Rachel, if you had any feedback for us? Um, no, uh, I think uh given the time we're applying for grants, it's been a uh, good response. Um, yeah, I think uh, relationship's pretty good. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. I may probably just, I know we haven't got Arib here, but I do want to say that today we did invite the Victorian Environmental Law Student Network, and the aim is to build the connections between students who are interested in the environmental and planning law animal law, sustainability, and business law, and international environmental law. So anything more to add about them, Subha? Uh, no, I think that pretty much covers them. They're a really uh, uh, a new group and they're trying to find initiatives. So a, a great one to collaborate with if you're interested in environmental um, advocacy and initiatives there. They run fantastic symposiums and conferences usually. So if you're interested or your group is interested in collaborating with them, I'd really suggest getting in touch with Areeb um, through president at velsn.org. Thanks. Thank you so much. Subha, so any final word from you about the grants before I ask Tavita to plug in what's happening this week? Yeah, so um, I wanted to reiterate what you said about um, contacting GSA in regards to support um, in using our platforms. The GSA engagement team has a, a range of different methods of support and um, platforms to provide you with assistance in hosting events, whether it be say a book club or a, a film discussion group to a trivia night, anything like that. If you were interested in, in potentially having that within the GSA platform on our website, um, we're more than willing to help you in that process so let us know get in touch we're we're very very happy to help you there thanks 
Thank you so much, Subha. And Tavita, over to you. What's happening this week at GSA's webinars and seminars this week? Yeah, look, thanks. Thanks, Rasha. Thanks, uh, everyone, for being on the call. It's really good to see the community still coming together during this, this time. So uh, GSA is no different. This week, um, we run our 10 a.m. webinar series uh, Monday to Thursday. So at 10 a.m., we're always running something, and we try and relate them to academic support, transition to work, um, and with the grad groups, and also supporting our graduates that are parents. So um, no different that to this week, we're also so supporting the university's um, theme on um, University Mental Health Day, which is tomorrow. So um, we will be talking to Professor Kerry Lee Krauss, who's the DVC for Student Life here at the university. And so she'll be talking to us about um, you know, the impact of COVID and, and what that's had on student, the Student Life Project. So Student Life is uh, coming together with a new student precinct and what university um, life will be for students in the coming years. So we'll be talking to her. Uh, we've collaborated with another uh, grad group, Meditate, um, and they're going to run a meditation session for us tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. And please look at our Facebook pages for any of the registration details. Um, and so that was to promote Mental Health Day. We have a special guest from the university talking to us about coping strategies for parents uh, with the, their anxiety and the, the, the children's anxiety around COVID-19 and now uh, working from home and studying from home. Um, we have a midweek workout. Uh, we've partnered with Melbourne University Sport. Um, and we've got a video on lower back mobility to sort of support um, us as we combat the, the setups of working from home and trying to stay uh, relatively uh, fit and um, look after ourselves. And then later in the week, uh, we'll be talking about um, COVID-19 and the effects it's had, the adverse, it's had, adverse effects it's had on international students. Um, uh, it's, it's a topic that we're running at 2 p.m. It's a forum that we've invited some students to come and discuss uh, essentially racism for, for these students in, in the light of COVID-19. So that's a, a great way to sort of tap in, listen and, and contribute. And then later in the week, at the end of the week, we've got, um, uh, uh, we've invited a, a, a musician to come and do a jam session for us via Zoom. Um, and so that's really exciting. That's gonna be late afternoon on the Friday. So all the, uh, the details will be on our Facebook page for registrations. Um, so go there and um, we, we do a uh, release uh, every week. And so keep an eye on our Facebook pages uh, for details. Thank you so much, Tavita. And um, you know, at the, at the end of this, we've come to the end of our session. And what I'd like to let everyone know is that it's important to access services. So services like Beyond Blue is still an online and a phone support that we can offer for people on mental health support. And they are available on 1-300-224636. And uh, it's also important that um, you jump onto our website, look at some of the services and the referrals that are there. So um, please ensure you access our services and welcome. we welcome you all to give us feedback on our program. So a big thank you to all the panelists for making it today and Subha and Tavita for joining me on Monday's program. I look forward to chatting with you tomorrow and um, on uh, another group of grad groups will be welcome, we'll be welcoming them on Monday to hear a little bit about the work that they do in their little clubs and societies. Thank you.